Corrupt leaders should count their days. It's a politician's boast delivered with an activist's punch. Arvind Kejriwal is promising a new democracy, but critics say his vision is selective and his ideas vague. The roadmap to his change the system mission seems to be riddled with a lot of rhetoric. But will he be more of the same breed that he's out to replace? Take a look at the newest Neta in town. These caps summed up Kejriwal's transformation from a Team Anna member to a politician. The crusade for Jan Lokpal has made way for more popular issues. His vision document underlining his political agenda was pushed into the background. The document made all the right promises with Jan Lokpal on the top of priorities. No, coincidentally what happens is Delhi is in 2011. If Maharashtra was in 2000, sorry, 2013, if Maharashtra was in 2013, maybe we would have, we would have plunged there. We'll need to look at our strengths at that point of time. There were plain people, but an alternative which promises to change the very nature of politics and the, the very nature of power in this country. Unfortunately, till now, people have not had any alternative. The attempt of this party is to provide exactly such an alternative to the people of India. But his promise to create a party with a difference stood out. What if even critics dismiss it all as mere symbolism? Arvind Kejriwal has announced the formation of a new political party. Does this worry the Congress party and do you believe he will cut into your votes? Not at all. In fact, I welcome his uh, move to form a political party. And democracy, I think this is the only way out. Promising a political revolution, Arvind Kejriwal and his new team presented an ambitious plan, cutting clear of the specifics. Like, what is his political view on contentious issues like Naxalism and FDI? Will his party take back the nuclear power program if they come to power? What are their plans and views on important foreign policy matters? And if his party has any social or economic agenda for India's growth? Important questions that his prospective voters would like an answer from Neta Kejriwal and his company. With camera person Sudhir in New Delhi, Ankit Tyagi for headlines today. The one word Arvind Kejriwal told us he hated the most was politician and through the last year he cursed them, he abused them and today officially he's turned into a Netaji himself. Let's go across to India's newest politician. Arvind Kejriwal is joining us. And he's got a cap going as well. So I see the symbolism is all there, Arvind. You know, and now you'll talk like a politician also during this interview because there's a certain baggage that comes with being a politician and they're saying that you've accumulated all that baggage and you're truly a Netaji now. No, that's completely wrong. As you rightly said just now in the introduction, we are into it because we hated the kind of politics that exists in the country. The people hate the kind of corrupt politics that is there. And that is the reason we have to enter it and we have to clean it. You know, I want to take up some of the points you made and take them up one by one and get your sense of how you're actually going to implement these things. Let's look at, you know, your vision statement which says that the prices of essential commodities should not be changed without the people's consent. Now, how do you really think, Arvind, people would ever agree to raise the price of any commodity? You know, it's one thing to say this in rhetoric. It's a completely different thing to be able to implement it. A lot of people would say, your vision statement is impractical. The, the question before the people is, that the government has given tax waiver of 5 lakh crore rupees last year to some big corporate houses. And that is what they are doing every year. Whether the tax waiver should be given to the corporates, or should the tax waiver be given on petrol and diesel? 
the government collects 2 lakh crore rupees of taxes on petrol and diesel that is a political decision that has to be taken should that decision be taken by some politician sitting in the ministry or should the decision be taken by the people if the politician has to take the decision he takes money from the big corporates he indulges in corruption and gives a tax waiver of 5 lakh crore no, no, rupees Arvin, to the big you haven't answered and my question suffer. let's assume that we have a poor crop of tomatoes potatoes what have you one particular year you're saying i'll go to the people i'll ask them should i increase the price of potatoes and tomatoes arvin the people would never agree as a politician don't you also have the responsibility to be, to be responsible we are not talking of all the commodities we are only talking of those commodities the prices of which are decided by the government petrol diesel lpg electricity water these are prices that are decided by the government so why is it it is eminently possible let me just tell you the model very briefly for the viewers in rural areas you have gram sabhas gram sabha is not panchayat panchayats have become very corrupt sarpanch has become corrupt gram sabha means the general body of all the people living in a village similarly you need to create bodies of mohalla sabhas in urban areas now once you have functioning gram sabhas and functioning mohalla sabhas on any particular issue on which you want opinion of the people you send a copy of that proposal to all the gram sabhas and mohalla sabhas the people will discuss no. in the next few days this is okay in a small country like switzerland back. in a big country like india this is going to be impractical when it comes to administration let me pick up one more of your points in the vision statement where you talk about not using security uh, when it comes to any politician now let's take the prime minister or any important minister if he were to move around without security at the time of such terrorism and so much threats that's a very dangerous thing you know you're saying all of this it seems to be we a lot of rhetoric which hasn't adequately been thought out given the practicality arvin we can make an exception of the prime minister or one or two such functionaries but you have seen the kind of paraphernalia that accompanies most of these ministers and most of these bureaucrats i think that is just not required whereas on one hand i mean i don't have figures right now the number of policemen which are there for the security of the people of delhi is a very small this thing of what the number of uh, security men which are there for the vips so is the police there for the security of the vips or is it there for the security of the people i think most of the people most of these policemen should be there for the security of the people not the security of vips that is a point that we are trying to so make. are we going to now see you have this gandhi stroke anna cap on each time you step out because anna ji in a way uh, symbolized it to the modern generation so will we now because you can't use his name will you try and use the symbolism of the gandhi cap to convey the image of this still being anna's party uh this cap is there because it says main hu aam aadmi we want to challenge the vip culture that exists in our country this vip today this country basically exists by the vips for the vips of the vips the people of this country are treated as an obstruction in this country main hu aam aadmi it gives a confidence to the people of this country we want to challenge this vip culture and we want to keep on saying that now henceforth there should be only one vip and that is aam aadmi so this cap basically symbolizes aam aadmi you know but the fact also is that anna hazare has been doing these various flip flops and i want your thoughts on this you know one moment he comes out on record and says politics is filthy i will not campaign for anybody arvind is doing this against my interest he says this in raligaon he comes to delhi says a completely different thing the sense that's going out arvind is that there is this tug of war taking place you know you are trying to pull him towards you there are others who are trying to pull anna away from uh from you and that's why anna is now swinging like a pendulum every day he is changing his stance in turn losing some of his own credibility i think there was perhaps some kind of a communication gap yesterday he's made it very clear that he has no problem in our entering into politics he has nothing to do with the party but those candidates which we put up out of those the ones that he finds good from his standards he will support those candidates you know one of the things this he also the position that he's taken one of the things he also said was if arvind kejriwal fights against kapil sibbal he will campaign for you so do you intend to take on the all powerful yeah, telecom minister uh, i have not thought about it
No, no, you are smiling and that smile is revealing a lot. Of course, you've been thinking about this. You're now a politician. <laughs> no, That's the most important question. Where are you going to fight from? And do you think if you were to fight with Sibyl, you'd win? What's your take on that? No, no, I'm, I'm, elections is not important for me. Whether I fight elections or not, if, who will fight elections, this is not at all important. Right? Believe me, we have not even thought about it. Who's going to fight elections, who's not going to fight elections. What we are right now engaged in is what kind of proper systems we should have in our own party and what kind of systemic changes are we looking for no, let me ask you a direct question and i won't let you pop us. this off arvin you're now a politician okay so this is not no i'm not interested in politics i will never join all of that is now in the past okay so that no longer holds the question is very direct will you or will you not contest an election yourself be honest don't answer like a politician no i'm saying that we are into it now so if you will there fight. is a need, I will not shy away from that. No, of course if there is a need, need I will not shy away party. from that. You are the leader of the party, of course there is a need. I am saying, that I have not thought about it, uh, uh, Rahul. But if it is important, I will do it. I am not saying no. But we have not thought about it, so how can I say that? No, because this... But I am not shying away from that. No, because Anna also said, in some I'm senses, not away from Sibbal that. is the face huh. of the government when it came to the Anna agitation and it no would be problem. an iconic yeah. clash in 2014, 2013, whenever it happens, the face of the government versus the face of civil society, you know, Arvind Kejriwal versus Kapil Sibyl, that would be a big contest, one of the most sought after watched contests of the next election. I have not thought about it, so I can't comment on it, I will think about it. You, okay, that's interesting. I see you're more and more becoming like a politician even in the answers that you give. <laughs> this uh, is wrong. This is how I used to answer in all your programs. Just because today we have launched a party, you start calling me politician. That's wrong. No, so we're not allowed to call you a politician. That's a dirty word. That's what you're saying? No, no, please do that. Please, please no, do because that. Please do that. Interestingly, <laughs> your former colleague, nemesis, whatever you wish to call him, uh, Baba Ramde was trying to outdo you today. You know, he had this big uh, morcha of his own where he was burning Swadeshi products. So clearly, his attempt was to try and ensure that Arvind doesn't get the headlines even on the day um, Arvind is launching his party. I don't think we are in competition. Of course, he is doing a good job. We are doing a separate. No, of course not. That is your perception. We are not in competition. No, because at some level, there is this competitive element about. Who emerges as the stronger voice? There is, there is Baba no, Ramdev no, no. on for the us, one. Yes. For us, for us, country is important. Corruption is important. And I think for him also, country is important and fighting against corruption is important. So I think we are doing it in our own ways. We have different ways of doing it. But I don't think it will be wrong to say we are in competition. I didn't even know where, what, what was he doing today. Frankly, I didn't know about it. Just now you told me. Okay, you know, because you're a politician, I'm not quite certain whether I should believe that or take your uh, word on face value when you're saying you didn't know what uh, Baba Ram. So you doing. don't have faith in politicians. I have zero faith. You don't faith have in faith them. in politicians. I have you're zero using faith the, in them. You, you. Uh, so you are. So now start having faith because good people are also entering politics. Yeah, we we also saw another new side of you, Arvind. You know, Arvind, the balladier, the singer. You were very charged up about uh, the Dushyant poem. Did that come from the heart? Can you do an encore yeah, it also? Can. It always comes from the heart. Sorry? Can you do an encore for us, please? Yeah, okay. Uh, Ho gai hai peer parbat si pighalni chahiye Is Himalay se koi ganga nikalni chahiye मेरे सीने में नहीं तो तेरे सीने में सही हो कहीं भी आग लेकिन आग जलनी चाहिए सिर्फ हंगामा खड़ा करना मेरा मकसद नहीं मेरी कोशिश है कि ये सूरत बदलनी चाहिए आज ये दीवार पर्दों की तरह हिलने लगी 
شرط لیکن یہ ہے کہ بنیاد ہلنی چاہیے ارون دیٹس دشنت دیٹ از فائری بیسٹ صرف ہنگامہ کھڑا کرنا میرا مقصد نہیں میری کوشش ہے یہ صورت بدلنی چاہیے ڈو یو ریئلی بلیو دیٹ دیر از اسپیس فار آئیڈیلزم ان پالیٹکس ٹو ڈے یو نو اٹس ون تھنگ ٹو سے دیٹ ہنگامہ کھڑا کرنا میرا مقصد نہیں میری کوشش ہے صورت بدلنی چاہیے اٹس کوائٹ نادر تھنگ ٹو ڈو اٹ گیون ہاؤ ڈرٹی پالیٹکس از یو نو اٹس ون تھنگ فار یو ٹو بی ایبل ٹو سی دس اٹس کمپلیٹلی اے ڈفرنٹ تھنگ فار یو ٹو بی ایبل ٹو ایکچولی ڈو دس I completely agree and that is the reason we are entering into it because we have to clean it up and we believe that unless we enter into it we will not be able to the country will not get to get rid of this corrupt politics you know because let's look at some of the other things you've said you you know you attacked Sheila Dixit for having increased uh, the price of power and water and you're saying you know let there be another civil disobedience movement we will not pay uh, our bills let the government do whatever so will we see you adopt the shrill left of left of left mamta banerjee type space that no matter what the policy oppose it because there's rhetoric there's populism there's a certain appeal oppose it uh, will you also oppose fdi in retail arvin uh so you have two questions one is that why are we opposing uh power price hike in delhi because there is corruption because drc had approved an order reducing the prices of electricity sheila dikshit sat on that order she did not allow that order to be passed and subsequently an order was made and passed which called for 100% increase in prices so there is corruption involved and we are fighting against it and we'll fight it to the end second is as far as fdi in retail is concerned there are several questions and i think the kind of politics that we want to do is rather than take stand on an issue which most of the parties do four people sit in a room and they think that they have all the knowledge in the world and they take a stand we want to start debates on various issues so on some of these issues we are going to have big debates in the country we want to bring all the all the contrary view points on table and try and evolve a consensus on the issue which will be our party's position we will do what the people say we will try and no, arrive at a different stakeholders on what the people say. let's not be naive here when that different stakeholders each of them will have a different viewpoint several of these viewpoints will be irreconcilable how do you take them together it's impossible to build consensus the government's been trying to do that for so long you know you can't once you're a politician you can't sit on the fence it sounds good for you to say what you're saying but these are viewpoints cast in stone nobody's going to change change them just because arvind kejriwal calls for a mega public debate the biggest stakeholder in this country is the public everything is done in public interest not for corporate interest not for any other interest but public interest so whatever is best in the interest of the public ought to be done and all other interests have to become subservient to public interest So let's have a public so debate. How do you define public interest? All the stakeholders What come. might be in my public interest might be against the public interest of some shopkeeper in Chandni Chowk. How do you determine what the larger public so interest is? is? That stakeholders, each of them with their own takes on any divisive issue. So I, uh, if you bring all these contrary viewpoints on table, and if you bring the data on table, for instance, it is being said that FDI would. help give better this thing prices to the farmers has walmart given better prices to the farmers anywhere in the world till now let's try and find out these facts let's try and find out these data this data and then let's present this data in the public and let's try to bring both the sides together and let's see what 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 emerges out of it you know, i am very confident that if you ha- because this is one thing that we have practiced practiced in the last 10 years we did mohalla sabhas we did many such public meetings If you have a public meeting, if you put contrary viewpoints, I think it is possible to find a solution after a few hours of debate. You know, Baba Ramdev made a comment honestly. today to our correspondent saying, "There's no point in launching a public party. The only way to make a difference is if you get 300 seats." Yeah, that's his comment. He says, "Only if they get 300 seats are they then in business. Otherwise, this is uh, you know this is of no use. It doesn't really serve any purpose. If you just win a handful of seats." how will you make the sort of impact how will you be the difference you wish to be arvin R- uh, rahul i'll tell you very honestly though you will not believe it again you will call me a politician but frankly we are very ordinary common people in this country 
we are also fed up of corruption and we have presented a view point to the country we have presented a vision document which is also based on feedback that we received from the country now if the people of this country feel that they are fed up of the present political okay. system and they want a change they will vote for it but if they feel that they are happy with the present system they will not vote for it so it is not our victory or our defeat it is their victory people's victory and people's defeat so we are not really worried about what what is going to happen whether it will we'll win or whether we we'll lose what we are what is important is that honestly let's try to find the solutions to the problems and present those solutions to the okay. public okay you've put if your the vision statement out and now the people must decide whether or not they wish to back what you are proposing what you are promising netaji arvind kejriwal we wish you all the best thank you very much for joining us thanks rahul thanks